Hello everyone, welcome to the Long Lang Show. Today I'm gonna do something new. I'm gonna interview ChatGPT, the artificial intelligence, because I want to know what does the artificial intelligence think about the upcoming Indian election and what does it suggest us or advise us to vote for. Let's see and let's go ahead and do this. Hi, ChatGPT. Do you think we can have a short conversation on one topic that I'm interested in? Of course. What topic would you like to discuss? Since in the election, the parliament election, which is the Lok Sabha election in India, is around the corner, I'm really curious what does or what will the intelligence I mean, artificial intelligence advise the citizens on choosing the right party or on choosing the right ideology. So please, I mean, we can have this conversation. Are you in? Absolutely, I'm in. When it comes to advising citizens on choosing the right party or ideology, artificial intelligence can provide insights based on data analysis and objective criteria. It can analyze party platforms, track performance metrics, and highlight key issues to help voters make informed decisions aligned with their values and priorities. I understand. Now, I want you to also know that when I ask you a question, please do not, please try to respond within 30 seconds at the max so that we can have a more interactive and conversational dialogue. Is that all right with you? Absolutely, I'll keep my responses within 30 seconds to ensure a smooth and interactive conversation. Let me know if you have any other preferences or questions. Thank you for that. So, um, are you aware of the upcoming Indian election, the 18th Lok Sabha election? Yes, I'm aware of the upcoming 18th Lok Sabha election in India. It's an important event with significant implications for the country's political landscape. Wonderful. So, are you aware of the dominant parties or parties which have the potential to win, you know, largely in this upcoming election? Are you aware of some parties in India? Yes. Some of the dominant parties in India include the Bharatiya Janata Party, BJP, the Indian National Congress, INC, and various regional parties like the Aam Admi Party, AAP, and All India Trinamool Congress, AITC. These parties have the potential to win seats and influence the outcome of the election. Great. So, but would you agree generally that Congress... Indian National Congress and the BJP Paradiya Janata Party are the two, you know, biggest political parties in India. Would you agree with that? Yes, generally speaking, the Indian National Congress, INC, and the Bharatiya Janata Party, BJP, are considered two of the largest and most prominent political parties in India with significant influence nationwide. So as an artificial intelligence, what do you understand about the values and ideology of the Pardia Janata Party? The Bharatiya Janata Party, BJP, is generally considered to be a center-right political party in India. It advocates for Hindu nationalism, cultural conservatism, and a free market economy. The party also emphasizes issues such as national security, development, and social welfare programs. Great. And what do you think about the uh, uh, International Congress ideology? The Indian National Congress, INC, is traditionally considered a center-left political party in India. It espouses principles of secularism, social justice, and inclusive economic growth. The party historically played a key role in India's independence movement and has been a dominant force in Indian politics for much of its post-independence history. So do you think BJP is a secular party in a sense? Do they believe in secularism? While the Bharatiya Janata Party, BJP, advocates for Hindu nationalism, it also claims to support the idea of secularism, though its interpretation of secularism may differ from other parties. 
the BJP has emphasized the concept of cultural nationalism, which prioritizes the cultural identity and heritage of India, including its Hindu roots, while also asserting that it can accommodate religious diversity. Great. Now, as someone who belongs to a um, religious minority, you know, which party do you think would be the right party to give our vote to in the upcoming election? As an AI, I don't have personal beliefs or affiliations, but I can suggest considering factors such as party policies, track record on minority rights, and alignment with your values and priorities when deciding which party to support in the upcoming election. It's important to research and evaluate each party's stance on issues that matter to you as a member of a religious minority. Suppose I'm a Christian. And will it be better for me to vote for BJP or will it be better for me to vote for the Indian National Congress ideologically? What do you think? As a Christian voter, it's important to consider how each party's policies and track record align with your values and priorities. The Bharatiya Janata Party, BJP, has emphasized Hindu nationalism, while the Indian National Congress, INC, traditionally advocates for secularism and inclusivity. You may want to research each party's stance on issues relevant to your community, such as religious freedom, minority rights, and social welfare, to make an informed decision. Yes, I agree with the fact that one has to research um, about the track record of each party. However, as per your opinion, how is the track record of PJB and how is the track record of Congress when it comes to you know uh, when it comes to treating the religious minorities like the Muslims, like the Christians or Buddhists or any other religion in India? The track record of each party regarding treatment of religious minorities is a complex issue with varying perspectives. The Bharatiya Janata Party BJ has faced criticism for incidents of religious intolerance and violence targeting minorities, particularly Muslims, during its time in power. On the other hand, the Indian National Congress, INC, has historically positioned itself as a champion of secularism and minority rights, although its record may also be subject to scrutiny and criticism. It's important to research specific incidents, policies, and actions taken by each party to assess their track record accurately. Great. So in 2019, the Indian election, the 17th Lok Sabha election was held and BJP won that election in a thumping majority. And what was the main agenda in the manifesto of the BJP party? Do you remember? In the 2019 Lok Sabha election, the main agenda in the manifesto of the Bharatiya Janata Party, BJP, included issues such as national security, economic development, infrastructure investment, welfare programs, and promoting Hindu nationalism. The party emphasized its achievements and proposed future initiatives in these areas to appeal to voters. Do you think the idea of the promotion of Hindu nationalism in a democratic country is a, is a good thing? Do you think? The promotion of Hindu nationalism in a democratic country like India is a topic of debate and can be viewed differently by different people. Some may argue that it strengthens cultural identity and unity, while others may express concerns about potential implications for religious minorities and secular principles. Ultimately, whether it's seen as a positive or negative aspect depends on one's perspective and interpretation of democracy, secularism, and national identity. Who is, the, who is the projected or, let's say, the potential prime ministerial candidate from the Congress party? Do you have any idea? As of my last update, Rahul Gandhi has been a prominent leader within the Indian National Congress, INC, and has been considered a potential prime ministerial candidate. However, It's essential to note that party decisions regarding prime ministerial candidates can evolve and may depend on various factors, 
including party dynamics and electoral strategies leading up to the election. Great. And in regards to BJP, do you think the inauguration of the Ram Temple in Ayodhya last month, do you think will it boost the, you know, the, the sense of voters to have inclination towards BJP in the election? The inauguration of the Ram Temple in Ayodhya by the Bharatiya Janata Party, BJP, last month could potentially influence voter sentiment, particularly among those who support the party's Hindu nationalist agenda. The event may resonate with voters who prioritize issues related to religious identity and cultural heritage, possibly boosting support for the BJP in the upcoming election. However, its impact on the overall electoral outcome will depend on various factors, including other campaign issues, regional dynamics, and voter perceptions leading up to the election. Do you think as a Christian, is it a good idea to vote for a party that promotes Hindu nationalism? Or is there any other better choice? As a Christian voter, it's important to consider how each party's policies and actions align with your values and priorities. While the Bharatiya Janata Party, BJP, promotes Hindu nationalism, you may also want to explore other parties' platforms and track records on issues relevant to your community, such as religious freedom, minority rights, and social welfare. Ultimately, the decision on which party to support should reflect your own beliefs and assessment of each party's suitability to represent your interests. So what do you know about Mr. Narendra Modi, who is the current Prime Minister of India? Do you have any information, any good information about him? Narendra Modi, the current Prime Minister of India, has been a prominent figure in Indian politics for many years. Mm -hmm. He has been praised for his efforts to modernize India's economy, improve infrastructure, and promote initiatives such as Digital India and Make in India. Additionally, he has focused on foreign policy, strengthening ties with various countries around the world. However, opinions about Mr. Modi vary widely, and his tenure has also been marked by criticism, particularly regarding issues such as religious tolerance, freedom of expression, and human rights. Give me one reason that I should one should vote for, you know, the BJP led by Narendra Modi. One reason some voters may consider voting for the BJP led by Narendra Modi is their focus on economic development and infrastructure improvement initiatives which aim to boost growth, create jobs, and improve living standards for citizens. And give me one reason that one should vote for Rahul Gandhi-led Congress party. One reason some voters may consider voting for the Indian National Congress led by Rahul Gandhi is the party's historical emphasis on secularism and inclusive governance, which aims to promote social harmony and protect the rights of religious and cultural minorities. And other than do these two parties, like we have um, AITC, All India Trinamool Congress, and who is the leader of Trinamool Congress currently, and how is the party functioning? The All India Trinamool Congress, AITC, ITC is led by Mamata Banerjee, who is currently the Chief Minister of West Bengal. Under her leadership, the party has focused on regional issues and governance in West Bengal, advocating for regional autonomy and development initiatives tailored to the state's needs. The AITC has also positioned itself as a secular and progressive alternative to the national parties, appealing to voters in West Bengal with its emphasis on regional pride and identity. And in the south, southern part of the country, that is like the southern part, like Tamil Nadu and Karnataka, the i the idea of the political parties like the BJP, the BJP is in kind of the southern part of India, particularly in states like Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. Regional parties play a significant role in politics. In Tamil Nadu, for example, the Dravida Munetra Kazagam. 
DMK and the All India Anna Dravida Munetra Kazagam, AIA DMK, are two prominent parties with leaders like MK, Stalin and Adapati K, Palanaswamy, respectively. In Karnataka, the Bharatiya Janata Party, BJP, the Indian National Congress, INC, and the Janata Dal Secular, JDS, are major players, with leaders such as B.S. Yediyarapa, Siddharamaya, and H.D. Kumaraswamy, respectively. These parties and leaders have their own ideologies and priorities, reflecting the diverse political landscape of the region. Are you aware of the Congress leader like Dr. Shashi Tharoor? Can you tell me briefly about who, who this person is? Yes, Dr. Shashi Tharoor is a prominent Indian politician, author, and former diplomat. He is a member of the Indian National Congress Party and has served as a member of parliament representing the Thiruvananthapuram constituency in Kerala. Dr. Tharoor has held various positions in the United Nations and is known for his eloquent speeches and writings on a wide range of topics, including politics, culture, and international affairs. He is often recognized for his intellectual contributions and has authored several books on diverse subjects. Great. Do you know anything about the state of Nagaland in India? Yes. Nagaland is a state located in the northeastern region of India. It is known for its diverse culture, scenic landscapes, and vibrant tribal communities. The state is inhabited primarily by Naga tribes and has a rich cultural heritage with traditional festivals, music, and dances being an integral part of Naga life. Nagaland has faced challenges related to insurgency and ethnic tensions in the past, but efforts have been made to promote peace, development, and reconciliation in the region. Kohima is the capital city of Nagaland, and Dimapur is its largest city and commercial hub. Now that you mentioned that Nagaland has faced a lot of challenges in, re in regards to the insurgencies and the militant uh, organizations, so accordingly the government of India has been negotiating, I mean both parties, the Naga groups and the government of India has been, have been negotiating to trash out a solution for, a political solution for both the parties. So who do you think will be able to deliver this kind of political solution for the Nagas in the upcoming election? I mean which party do you think would be more feasible to deliver this kind of political solution to the Nagas? Delivering a political solution for the Nagas involves complex negotiations and requires cooperation between the central government and Naga groups. While multiple parties may be involved in the process, the feasibility of reaching a solution depends on various factors, including the commitment of political leaders, the willingness of stakeholders to compromise, and the broader political climate. Both national and regional parties may play a role in facilitating dialogue and finding a resolution that addresses the aspirations and concerns of the Naga people. It's important for voters to assess each party's track record, approach to conflict resolution, and commitment to inclusive governance when considering their potential to deliver a political solution for the Nagas. Great, that's a very practical suggestion. And and one question is, are you aware of uh, Mr. Arvind Kejriwal, who is the Chief Minister of Delhi, who has been currently arrested by the Enforcement Directorate? Are you aware of that? As of my last update, I'm not aware of any information regarding Arvind Kejriwal, the Chief Minister of Delhi, being arrested by the Enforcement Directorate. It's essential to verify such news from reliable sources as information can change rapidly and updates may occur after my last training data. So ChatGPT, now that the election is around the corner. Yes, feel free to ask me anything. What would you like to know? Yes, now that the election is around the corner, so um, what is your last message or advice to the voters of India of to, to take into consideration while choosing the right party and while choosing the right ideology to vote in the upcoming you know, 2024 18th Lok Sabha election? What will be your last message or what will be the message that you would like to give to all voters in India? We have about 900 million voters. My 
My advice to voters in India is to carefully consider the issues that matter most to them and to critically evaluate each party's platform, track record, and leadership. It's essential to research and analyze the policies and promises of each party, as well as their potential impact on various communities and sectors of society. Additionally, I encourage voters to prioritize inclusivity, tolerance, and the values of democracy when making their decision. Ultimately, the power to shape the future of the country lies in the hands of each individual voter, and it's crucial to vote thoughtfully and responsibly for a better tomorrow. You just mentioned about the values of inclusivity, tolerance, and democracy. So which party fits better into this narrative in India? Determining which party aligns best with the values of inclusivity, tolerance, and democracy can be subjective and may vary depending on individual perspectives and interpretations. It's important for voters to assess each party's actions, policies, and track record on issues related to inclusivity, tolerance, and democratic principles. By critically evaluating each party's commitment to these values, voters can make an informed decision that reflects their own beliefs and priorities. Well, it's quite quite interesting uh, for the fact, I mean, with uh, quite interesting that, you know, you are designed to be politically correct. Um, anyway, that's how artificial intelligence is. So who designed you? Are you politically correct as well? I was developed by a team of researchers and engineers at OpenAI. As an AI language model, I'm designed to provide responses that are neutral, respectful, and in line with community guidelines. My my goal is to assist users in generating coherent and relevant text based on the input provided to me without expressing personal opinions or biases. If you have any other questions or topics you'd like to discuss, feel free to let me know. One more question. Are you influenced by people who design you? As an artificial intelligence language model, I don't have personal experiences or emotions so I'm not influenced by the individuals who design me. However, my responses are based on patterns in the data I was trained on, which can include various sources of human-generated text. While efforts are made to ensure that I provide accurate and helpful information, I don't have the ability to form opinions or be influenced in the same way humans are. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time, and you know, I look forward to having another round of conversation. Um, So thanks so much for your time and your opinion is quite helpful. And I'm sure many people will find your opinion and your suggestions helpful too. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Goodbye.